the comic station issue number 81 for July 16th, 2014. And if you hear a bunch of crashing and everything, don't worry, that's just the apocalypse thunderstorm happening outside. I'm going to start things off with Infinite Crisis, Fight for the Multiverse. Because yeah. that's what we needed, another tie-in to a video game. And this one is a MOBA, which... There's no... There, how can you make a MOBA and it just... They eventually take this and it, they really could have just done a better job if they had just printed Read Infinite Crisis, the actual comic book. That would have been much better. This one, they, it felt a little ham-fisted. They tried to shove it into the storyline with uh, just how all the multiverse comes around, how the 52 were now there, and it just felt very ham-fisted. It had all the problems of basically all current DC Comics. It feels like it's overcompensating, Batman is given undue importance because he has the most movies made out of his character, the design is terrible, the artwork coloring is bad, and overall this was done better when it was called Countdown. You can tell how bad it is. They really just, like I said, ham-fisted. They shove in uh, why there are bots, that are based, it never quite explains that. It doesn't actually explain why they have why there's champions, but why are there two groups of champions fighting heads? It doesn't really explain any of the what you would think would be the storyline for Infinite Crisis. It just kind of goes, this is a storyline that we kind of want to make, and let's put it into this bucket. Yeah, it, though bumping around through various alternate universes, none of the universes are given enough time to be explained or fleshed out. The character nope. design is awful to the point where you'd actually think characters from different universes are from the same one because they're so generic and so over-designed. It's really not very good. There's too much fighting, no characterization. Yeah, pretty much. Over here, we also oh, have... We, if you want a good video game comic yeah. book, read Injustice. That is amazing. Even if someone who doesn't like it, I find it hilarious as almost a parody yeah. of itself. That is a good video game. Yeah. Go read Injustice and then read Infinite Crisis, the regular comic, and just skip Infinite Crisis, this tie into the video game. The big thing I'm told people are looking forward to this week is Robin Rises. Omega! I don't know why it's called that. Uh, yeah. It's okay. It's basically just one big fight scene with, I will admit, some well-done backstory at the beginning. So if you're just coming into the saga with this installment, you won't be lost, but you won't really be invested either. So which Robin's getting risen uh, again? Damien is the only Robin who's still technically dead. Okay. Yeah. They just won't let Robin die. Um, which, it concerns mainly Apocalypse and some really weird nonsense backstory with the Chaos Shard, no doubt on loan from any given Ultima game. Although it's basically just the Dark Crystal of Eclipso, but that hasn't been said yet. Um, Spoiler. The biggest problem with this so far for me is twofold. On the one hand, Batman in it acts really insane and gritty and angry and desperate, punching members of his team and yelling at people, which, so, you know... Of course. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's supposed to show him being more desperate as he tries to resurrect his son, but it just feels like any other Batman appearance. At the same time, wow, I did not realize how bad the Justice League are now. They show up for a cameo in this, and it's like Captain Marvel is swearing all over the place, because I always said Shazam, you know, with the childlike wonder, needed more obscenities all over his character. Aquaman is killing people who are literally being brainwashed into serving the Dark Gods, just straight up murdering them with killer whales, because, you know, that's how heroes should act. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I did not care for it. Alright, uh, Alpha, my kick for the Teen Titans, Teen Titans Goes, and Alpha's latest kick of uh, Young Justice. Watch that, by the way. This one is Teen Titans number one from DC Comics, and I was looking forward to this, like I said, I'm coming off of all these kicks of these great cartoons. I really should just... Flashbacks to college. And... <sighs> there's not enough backstory. Coming off of these stories I haven't re kept up with the Teen Titans comics so I don't even know who Bunker is. Uh, Wonder Girl only reason I know her is from Young Justice season 2 and just saw her and Raven is I don't even know what the story of Raven is anymore. If you have been following with the previous comics which I at least a bit have and know the characters it's decent it's nothing really amazing as a first issue there's not a lot to differentiate it from the previous titan series characters are a little bit nicer to each other but mm -hmm. nothing amazing here I, I do like that they jump right into the action i do like that they set up a uh, mystery with star labs yeah the star labs part is probably my favorite bit of the comic is they're usually just kept as this nebulous yet good agency so digging a bit more to them is interesting and manchester black shows up working them someone should probably keep an eye on that yeah and i actually as a first issue, I was left a little bit in the dark because, like I said, I'm not quite familiar with these. They're not, there's no backstory. They're already a team. They're already working together. But at the same time, I like 
jumping right into the action, keeping the flow of it. Star Labs, I like the fact that maybe you're not quite sure if they're actually this benevolent company yeah. anymore or what's going on. I do like that. I think that maybe future issues might do a little bit of backstory to help catch people up on it. And there was less it's... character bickering than a lot of other books. Like, yeah. It's kind that'll of amazing come. that, 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 yeah, that always comes in Teen Titans. At least, at least I can say that I'm glad that the Teen Titans aren't, you know, punching each other and stuff like the Justice League was. You know, the adult heroes. Yeah. That's... Next up, we have our only indie book for the week, The Last Fall from IDW, which I really liked. It's basically the plot of any given Red Faction game in that it's Earth versus Mars like normal, but it's elevated by having some better-than-average sci-fi writing, some very good artwork with great color and very bright colors, which you don't see in a comic that's based around war, and an interesting subtext of having the war between Earth and Mars be a religious war that happens to coincide with one for minerals and resources. It's well told. Convenient. Yeah. And like, I like that because it plays on that sort of thing. It reminds me a bit of some of the better elements of the third Starship Troopers movie. Don't watch that. It's not good. No, um... Yeah. I, I kind of like the white the ideas that Starship Troopers continued after one. <laughs> the, the best thing about the worst thing about it, Missouri would say, would be the protagonist is a little bland. He's every gruff, angry marine ever. He's just Marcus Phoenix again. But other than that, there's a lot of stuff to like in here. The universe is imaginative and engaging, and the artwork is good. And finally, oh dear God, Harley Quinn invades San Diego Comic Con, and it's awful. It's really not funny. There's tons of different art styles that clash with each other. It makes no sense. It's in its own continuity, but not. It somehow, it exists in our world and the world of DC Comics at the same time. Don't question that. It takes pot shots at Marvel for being unoriginal. The same week that Marvel announced female Thor. So yeah, it's really terrible. The only thing that's funny in it is when it pokes fun at Dan Didio. Well deserved fun. Yeah, just looks like an excuse to watch a whole bunch of cosplay. Yeah. Outfits, yeah. honestly. And big enough female Thor. Actually, yeah. I look forward to this because there's uh, Thor, uh, God of Thunder. Jason Aaron wrote that. He's doing the uh, original Sin. He is also signed up to do this Thor. Mm -hmm. Simple title. And, of course, like you said, the, the trick is that Thor is now a female. And he said that this is not a Lady Thor. This is not a Thorita. This is, this is Thor as a female. Something happens, obviously. It's not like that one time when Storm got the hammer, or when Wonder Woman used it for a while. Yeah. Or even when Beta Ray Bale or someone else became Thor. Just Thor himself is a woman now. Yep, and it's something to do, like, Thor got a thunder, and Loki agent Asgard is taking a break over the summer for the original Sins, uh, Thor and Loki yep. team-up thing, finding... So that's a very popular thing now, and I see why. I mean, it was good in Thor the Dark World when they teamed up. Yeah, there you go. So... It, you, something's going to happen with that storyline. I don't know how they're going to actually tie it in and make sure people don't go, uh, what? Yeah. But it, it's possible. I like it. I like the idea. I wonder how they're going to pull it off. A uh, little hesitant because Thor is one of my favorite characters right now. Thor, God of Thunder, is on my pull list. And I'm wondering how that's going to tie in, how that's going to affect the storyline. While at the same time, I like the idea that they're going to try something new. And this does make... They made a special note in the... Uh, press release that this is the eighth title that has a leading female protagonist. So yeah. I like the fact that they're growing this uh, female protagonist as the lead character. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm looking forward to, you know, Girl Next Thor. So we'll, we'll see how you this You are dying. Out. Yeah, <laughs> it's recently Marvel. If you do not put that in there somewhere, I will be disappointed. <laughs> and... I, I just wonder how long it's going to last. Yeah, it's one of the things like New Krypton that you know it will not be a permanent thing, you, unless it really catches on. Um, kind of doubt it, though. Yeah, but in so much case, you know, just tell good stories with the idea and enjoy the ride. That's what I plan to do. Yeah, I, I expect it to go... Let's see if it goes 12 issues. I'll be happy with that. I hope that it lasts at least as long as Superior Spider-Man. Yes, and that did well. Everyone likes that, and yeah. of course now they're doing the multiverse with the... Spider-Man all joining together, and, and if that, like, he'll be back. Spider-Man 2099 was very good, despite what Comics Alliance says. So we'll see. So, yep, and, well, there's your little San Diego Comic-Con news, because they announced that with that. Yeah. And that's happening next week. A whole bunch of stuff coming out. We'll so probably we'll, talk about that when we get to it. Yeah, we'll go over some of the news, unfortunately, as you could tell, we can't all attend. And yeah. we'll, but we'll at least go over some of the bigger news that comes out of the San Diego Comic-Con. Want to go one year? <laughs> I think right. that's it for us, guys. Yeah, that is it. And now I get to go slosh to the the rivers. So back home. All right. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.